Welcome to Matrix 101. In this introductory matrix video, you will learn how to set up and manage your dashboard, how to start and save a search, and how to generate reports and get them to your clients. To access your matrix dashboard, we'll start from the Pro Home page. Just select the matrix dashboard button at the top. Now that you've accessed your dashboard, you can customize it by dragging the items or clicking the X button, which simply puts it under additional. To bring it back, just click on it and drag it right back to your location. There are three things we'll go over on the dashboard. Your market watch, hot sheets, and your favorite searches. We'll start with market watch. To customize your market watch, just select the customize button. First, select the type of listings you want. Once you've selected the type of listings, select the location by city, zip code, county, or MLS area. I'll search for the city of Sunnyvale. If you wish to use more than one city, simply type in a comma. Here I'll search for Sunnyvale and use a comma to also search for Campbell. The same would apply if you're searching for zip codes, counties, or MLS areas. Now that I've selected the listing types and the location, simply hit the Save button, and now you have a customized market watch for the area you wish to watch for. Now that I've customized my market watch, I can also toggle it by selecting seven days, last three days, today, or the last 24 hours. If you'd like to customize your market watch for something other than residential, just click on the drop-down box and you can select from rentals, lots and land, multi-units, commercial, mobile homes, or cross property, which lets you choose between multiple classes. To view the individual listings in each of these categories under the market watch, just select the one you wish to see. As an example, I'll select the list prices that have been decreased over the last seven days. The listings that have decreased their list price are now displayed. If you move your cursor over the change information, it will tell you the exact dollar amount that it has been dropped to. Now let's go to our dashboard and create a hot sheet. To create a hot sheet, click the Customize button. To add a new hot sheet, click the Add button. From here, you can go ahead and name your hot sheet. In this example, I'll name it Campbell and hit the Save button. Now that we've named our hot sheet, hit the Edit Criteria button. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see the different change types. You can select them individually by holding your Control key or use any change to get all change types. Once you've selected the change type, select the property class. This is what we refer to as a cross property class. It allows you to search between all of our classes, residential, residential income, all the way to commercial or even rentals. Simply select the class you wish to access and the different property types will be displayed below. As I select the individual classes, the property types are included below. Now that we've selected our change type in our property class, Let's select our location for our hot sheet. Once again, you can select via city, zip code, county, or area. I'll select Campbell as an example for my location. Keep in mind, just like in the market watch customization, just add a comma to add additional cities, zips, counties, or areas. Now that we've set up our location, Let's go ahead and hit the Save button at the bottom. And now we simply hit the Done button and we've created a hot sheet for Campbell. Now that we've created our hot sheet, just click on the hot sheet you've created to access the data. Since I chose any change when I set up my hot sheet, I'm getting new listings, listings that have decreased their list price, transactions that have fallen through, listings back on the market, and listings that have gone from active to contingent, active to pending, and 
listings that have gone from pending to sold, as well as listings that have been canceled or expired. Now let's take a look at conducting a basic matrix search. At the top of the screen, I'll select search, giving me the options for residential, rental, lots and land, multi-units, commercial, mobile homes, cross property, as well as some other open houses, tours, and other searches. I'm gonna go ahead and search, search residential. Now that we're in residential search, select the status of the listings. The property type and any criteria pertaining to beds, bathrooms, square footage, lot size, age, or stories. If I wish to search for a two or three bedroom home, I'd express it by typing two three. If you would like to search for two or more bedrooms, use a two plus. In this search, I'll ask for a two or three bedroom home and two to three total baths. By doing so, I'll be getting in my results two full bathrooms, two and a quarter, two and a half, and three full bathrooms. For square footage, I could use a range, 1,200 square foot to perhaps 1,600 square foot by just using a dash. Or again, I could use a plus to get square footage above 1,200 square feet. To filter via list price, put in the price range I'll say $1.5 million and use a minus or dash to represent getting everything listed at 1.5 million down to a dollar. If you wish to do a range, type in the range parameters or again, use a plus sign. In this instance, I'd get everything listed at 1.5 million and above. Now that we have the status, property type and some basic criteria, I'll select the location for my listings. Notice when I type in the city of San Jose, all of the individual MLS areas inside that city are displayed and available to search. It looks like I have 27 matches. So I'll hit the results button at the bottom of the page. Now that I'm on the results page, this results page is what we call an agent one line display. It is our default display. You can customize it by dragging and dropping columns or by sorting columns. Simply click on the column you wish to sort for. For instance, bedrooms, I click it once, it's least to greatest, I click it again, and it displays greatest to least. Let's click on one of these individual listings. Now that I've clicked on the listing, I have the option to toggle between listings, tax data, photos, history, a parcel map, a flood map, and any foreclosure information that's there. If I select the history tab, you'll see I'm getting the listing history from the MLS. But if I scroll down, I'm also getting the sale history from public records, as well as the mortgage history. If I click back on the listing tab, it brings me back to the listing information. On this listing tab, you'll see the photos are available, the map, and on the right hand side, you see the characteristics of the property, the building square footage, lot square footage, year built, parcel number, days on market, as well as the listing agent's name and phone number. Scrolling down, we'll see the public remarks, the private remarks in red, which are confidential only for agents, the showing information, and at the very bottom, and at the very bottom, the listing agent information. To go back to our search results, just click on the Agent One Line Display tab at the very top. Now that we've done this search, let's save it and save it to our favorite searches, which will be displayed on our dashboard. At the bottom of the screen, click on the Save button and then New Save Search. To save a search, give it a name. Select your contact or client and then click the box that says enable as a favorite search to save it on the dashboard. You can have up to 25 saved on your dashboard. Click save and you see at the top left, 
created save search, San Jose new listings. So I know my save has been completed. If I go to my dashboard, I can see under favorite searches, the one I just saved as San Jose new listings. If you hit the update all button, it'll tell you if there's been any new results since the last time you've accessed those search results. Now that we've saved the search, I can access it by clicking on it under favorite searches. And keep in mind that under recent searches as well on the top. Now that we've saved the search, let's set up an auto email. To set up an auto email from the search results page, move from actions to save at the bottom of the page. You'll see the option for new auto email. To set up the auto email, first select your contact. CC who you like, and if you like, BCC yourself, so you get exactly what your clients are getting. Once you put a subject line in, I'll say new listings, scroll to the bottom and you can set your schedule. You can set the schedule for daily or ASAP. Daily emails will only get sent on the days you choose. If you choose ASAP, any new listing results will go out to your client immediately. There is a third option and that's concierge mode. When you click concierge mode, go to save and go to approvals at the bottom of the screen. Unlike daily and ASAP, concierge mode will not send anything to your clients automatically. You go into your results and select the listings you want to send to your clients. Once you've done so, just hit approve selected at the very bottom. Concierge mode gives you the ability to take a look at the listings before you send them to your client. But do keep in mind that nothing will automatically get sent like daily or ASAP schedules. You will receive an email from the system alerting you that you do have new results waiting to be approved in the concierge mode. Now that we've set up the auto email, let's take a look at getting driving directions. Once again, I'm on the results page, but this time I'm gonna move from save to actions. Once I select the listings that I want to take my clients to, just hit the directions button at the bottom of the screen. You'll see the map on the left, along with the listings that you've selected, and turn by turn directions toward the bottom of the page. You can rearrange the order of the listings by clicking on the listing and dragging it into its new order. Just make sure if you do so, to click the directions button one more time. That'll reset the map, as well as your turn by turn directions. You can also add a starting point or a stopping point. But again, hit the directions button as soon as you do, which will reset the map. You can then email those directions straight to your client or simply print them out. Finally, let's take a look at the Aculus market trends available from the Pro homepage. On the lower right side of the screen, you'll see Aculus market reports. To search for specific market reports, just enter the city, zip, area, school district, or MLS number at the top of the screen. As an example, I'll search for San Jose. As soon as I search for the city of San Jose, it lets me know I have 18 total reports for San Jose. On the left hand side of this screen, you'll notice you can then narrow it down into specific zip codes or MLS areas, as well as school districts. To select an individual report, just click on the report and click on email me this report. If you'd like us to send you this report automatically each month, just click automatic delivery. Keep in mind you get three reports for free every month. Also make sure to set up your branding. If you see the sold sign, as I have on the top left, that means your photo has not been uploaded. Just click the view upload photo to make sure you have your proper branding. These reports are PDF reports and can take about five to 10 minutes to be delivered. This concludes our Matrix 101 video. Please make sure to take Matrix 201 or Matrix 301 for more advanced search techniques in Matrix. Thank you.